Anderson. This is who has joined us in the studio hey guys. <laughs> from, in, uh, from NVIDIA. Absolutely. And you're, you've been coming by to give us our, our Tech Talks. This, you like alliteration, so it's Tech Talk with Tom. Is that tech wow. Talk with Tom. Let's do that. I don't know. Has that T -T -T. been used? Yeah, I love it, though. Tech Talk with Tom. Yeah, you yeah. should yeah. grab, grab, grab I'm gonna that. I'm going to grab hold of that. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you're here to talk about multi-frame sampling AA. Design. Exactly. Yeah. Multi-frame sampled AA. Awesome. MFSAA. We dropped the S. Oh, so MFAA. it's MFAA. And you know okay. what the, the web has said? We launched this name yesterday, and nobody is calling it MFAA. They're calling it Mother AA, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really exciting, AA. Yeah. It's really exciting, AA. Yeah. It's really exciting, <laughs> the first AA. thing that popped into my exactly. head, Exactly. And it's kind of, you know, it's the a little stickier. The internet and I, we think alike. Yes. Yes, we do. So I know, like, anti-aliasing, the, yep. the staircase, or the aliasing, the staircasing effect that happens. Exactly. Uh, when you're, when movement or anything happens, you can really yeah, explain it. Yeah, it's really irritating. But I'm interested to know about the multi-frame anti-aliasing. Okay. So break it down, Tom. I'm going to break it down. So I'll give a little recap of what aliasing is. Yes. And it's, it's kind of, the aliasing is pretty much what we, what we call a sampling problem, where you're looking at a geometry that's effectively a continuous function. You're looking at an edge of a triangle, and you have to kind of get that onto your screen somehow, but your screen is discrete pixels. So what you're doing is trying to figure out what color should pixels be, trying to make it look like this continuous line that you can't really represent. So aliasing is that, is that coarseness that happens when you do that mapping. And it looks really shitty as lines move across that coarse grid. You know, you get things that are saying on and off and on and off, and it looks very pixely. So anti-aliasing uh, is a technique to try to minimize that by hitting mid-shades between the on and off. You're going to hit like a gray instead of a black and a white. Now, uh, multi-sample aliasing is a little bit complicated, and I probably ought to show a picture to explain how that works. Diagrams and All right, pictures. so I have diagrams. Oh, I got through Let's college. And <laughs> yeah. we're going to the big board. Right. Boom! Big board. Okay. Touch screen again. I'm very excited about this. I, f I feel like it's going to work. I feel like we are so in your class right now. I need to. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. We're yeah. going to touch the screen, and it should play. Now, I hope this has no audio, but we'll see. Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay, so it's just a little bit of gameplay. This, by the way, is downloadable off of NVIDIA.com, I hope, today, right? And, ah, uh, okay, oh, we're going to stop. Your, your presentation's moving without you. It's okay. I was coming to this grid. Okay, good. Okay, now, for those of you that were watching, this grid is actually pixels, okay? And um, I'm going to black it out and show you what's happening when you have a continuous line, okay? Now, that line represents the edge of a triangle that's kind of you're moving in your scene because, you know, when we render something, we're always working with triangles. And triangles have edges, but what we're trying to do is figure out how do we get these triangles to appear on the screen. So you might ask yourself, well, you know, if I'm doing this, the question is what color should that whole pixel be? What color should that whole pixel be? And what color should that whole pixel be? And you can tell that the answer is not black and white. But uh, unfortunately, let's go here, and we're going to say, see if I can get this to work. Yeah, I think we're back on, right? Yes. This is exciting, Jesus. OK, so you see what we did here? We said, if there's a line coming through here, what you really want is this to be the first color and the bottom to be the second color. But let me tell you how that happens. It's called sampling. Now, I told you that there's these pixels, and there's a continuous line that comes through the pixel. So what this is showing you is the way the scene ought to look, right? There's a triangle, and there's an edge on this side, an edge on this side, but we've got to figure out how do we represent this white and this black. So what we do is called sampling. And you can think about sampling as precise math. You know, we're able to check, is that line above or below that dot? And the dot's right in the center of the grid. So that's how we make this easy decision, right? You, you can kind of say, all right, this dot is below, this dot's above, so that ought to be white and this ought to be black. So let's go ahead and play it. Okay. Come back here and play. Yes, we're playing. Okay, now we're coloring it in. Okay, so what it said is if you look at these two dots, right, this one's going to be black and this one's going to be white. That's why we've got this funky stair step. That's what aliasing is. Wow. It's taking this continuous line and converting it to the grid, which are the pixels on your screen. Okay? Now, um, anti-aliasing tries to improve this. And the way it improves it, are we playing? I think we are playing. Yeah. The way we improve it is we take more than one sample per pixel. So now in this case, we're going to use two samples. And it's actually not that hard of a concept. Let's put the line back on there. Okay, now the line comes through. So now, since this is a continuous function and the samples are in a continuous space, it's just the edge of a triangle. And so when we do these comparisons, we can check, hey, how about this part of the pixel? versus this part of the pixel. We can do two, two, two checks. And in this case, one's going to say above and one's going to say below. In this case, they're both below. In this case, they're both above. 
So now you can see if you think about what that means, we can calculate a 50% black and a 50% white. Like this grid, as an example, let's go ahead and play it, ought to be gray. Right, so let's just think about this one. We took two samples, one of them's above the line, another one's below the line, and that means effectively we can shade gray. Pretty straightforward, right? That's how multi-sampling works. Okay. That's MSAA 2X, 4X, 8X, whatever. So as we go forward, let's think about what's different with MFAA. Okay, I'm going to clear this. So we're playing for it a little I bit. Really I just want you to know that it was, it, I held back as much as I could to not make a Fifty Shades of Grey joke. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time he was explaining that, I was, I was holding back, folks. I just wanted to let you know that. Okay, now this is thinking about it differently. Thanks for holding back. <laughs> so we've got these multiple points, but it's very expensive. Now what multi-frame sample daliasing says, why don't we do this over time? Instead of doing multiple points at the same frame at the same time, I'll take the left frame, the left data point at one frame, and the right data point at the next frame. And then we'll combine those two together to get the same result over time. Okay, so we're coming forward now. See it kind of ticking back and forth, so the line comes in. So in the first uh, uh, instance of MFA, the, the dot is gonna be to the left. Okay, so the dot being to the left means that in this case it's gonna be white, this is gonna be white, this is gonna be black, that's gonna be white. And it's all because how does the line intersect the, the dots, right? Those dots are called coverage samples. That's why they call it multi-sample, okay? So now as we keep going forward, in the next frame, hopefully we're gonna show it, yeah, I think we are, the dots changed, right? So instead of being here, the dots are now, oops, the dots are now on the other side. So some of these pixels change colors. And we didn't actually you know, change the geometry or change the grid, we changed the sample position. That's a feature of Maxwell. It allows us to change the sample locations every other frame effectively, and even change the positions within a frame. All right, so are you with me so far on where I'm samples are? You. Any I'm questions? How do you I feel? I probably couldn't give this presentation myself. But you're this, getting it, right? But I'm totally getting it. Okay, any Skype questions so far? You guys dot good? Dot below white, dot above black. Bingo. Boom. And you know why? Easy. I because just, I just brought it all there's a, a triangle up here, right? And what you're trying to do is represent this black triangle on the pixels that are your screen. And what we're, the way we're figuring that out is we're taking two tests of that line versus the pixel grid. So the more sampling you're able to do, the less aliasing you're gonna experience. And the reason is because you're gonna have a better average. If you take seven samples or eight samples, then you might find ones above and seven or below, so that would be a one-eighth color. Right. And conversely, you could have five and three and get a five-thirds color. So like you're increasing the aggregate. We are. So let's think about multi-frame aliasing. Now in frame two, we got a different color. Remember frame one, whoops. Frame one, frame two, you can now see it changing. It's this pixel that's different. Mm -hmm. So what we do with MFAA is now we combine the value of those two, frame, those two pixels over time and take an average. It's effectively mathematically equal to multi-sample AA. It's just that we're doing the sampling over time instead of at the same frame. The reason that's good is because we can get the, the experience or get the, the grid look of multi-sampling AA, multi, you know, MSAA, but we can get the performance of MFAA, which is around 30% faster, because we're only doing one sample point at a time. So how this translates to playing games is that your graphics are just gonna look dope. Exactly. Right? It's gonna look exactly like the this. The more FAA, the, the better the stuff gets, the better our graphics are gonna be. Bingo. Okay. Yeah, so the better your uh, AA is, the more realistic your games look, and the more, uh, the more immersive they become. Sure. And what we're doing is just improving the way uh, aliasing or anti-aliasing is done from generation to generation. We're like little gnomes, <laughs> and yes. we, sit in our, we sit in our little gnome world, <laughs> and we just sort of beaver away, making <laughs> graphics better and better. That's, and so we've got, we've got here. Pixel for pixel. MFAA. Wow, people. <laughs>